The performance of deep learning is everything. CAFE2 is a framework that we worked on with, with the team at uh, Facebook, and uh, recently they announced that CAFE2 is now going to be Volta ready. It's really delightful to work with them, and our engineers are working really closely together. These frameworks are incredibly complicated. We worked also with Microsoft on their Cognitive Toolkit. One of the things that's really great about the Microsoft Toolkit is that it's able to scale incredibly well. Let me show you the numbers. If you look at CAFE2, the Kepler performance, eight Keplers, eight supercomputing GPUs, was able to train this network in 40-something hours, 40-something hours, basically almost two days, almost two days. Last year with Pascal, you can get a DGX1 box and you can train that same network basically within a day. And now with Volta and P100, you can t train that network in a shift. The productivity of these engineers is so vital and the reason for that is because there's so few of these amazing deep learning scientists and their time is scarce. The productivity of deep learning, the magic of deep, deep learning is so great that everybody wants to jump on this and get products to market. And so the pressure on all of these engineers and scientists to deliver is incredible. That's one of the reasons why there's so many acquisitions happening all over the world. Now when you finally get those engineers, you want to make sure that they have the best possible technology, the most productive environment to develop their network on. So the difference between having to wait for two days versus literally one shift is groundbreaking, but you want more than that. And so CNT, oh, excuse me, Microsoft's Cognitive Toolkit, which used to be called CNTK, can now train a network, multi-node training, of the ResNet 50 network, which is a really gigantic network, and it integrates our SDK called Nickel, collective, co collective communications, basically allowing all of the GPUs to work together as one big farm. They are able to scale 64 voltas together and turn what used to be Days, hours, shifts, down to basically a couple of hours. A couple of hours. So with 64 voltas behind that deep learning scientist, now the iteration could, be, could happen much, much more quickly. One of the newest networks called, is called MXNet. Incredibly popular. And it's grown, come out of nowhere, and it's growing like a weed. Everybody loves it because it's so scalable. It's flexible, and we're working with Amazon to enhance it for Volta. And recently, they benchmarked it on Volta and using LSTM, which is a, a network for time sequence learning, we're able to improve the performance dramatically from previous years. And so now we can train an, on one GPU alone, MXNet could be trained in just several hours. To come and share some of their insight about the work that they're doing in artificial intelligence. We have a special guest with us today. This is Mad Wood, the general manager of artificial intelligence for Amazon. We're so happy to have you come and join me on stage here. Hey, Matt. Good morning. Welcome. Hey, Jensen, how are you doing? Great to have you. Hey. So, so first of all, you know, I think that, that um, everybody knows about uh, Amazon's artificial intelligence effort, even though you guys have been working on it for so long. They really, really learned about it because of Echo and Alexa. Yeah, I mean, we have been uh, working with machine learning and deep learning for over 20 years at Amazon, yeah. and it's become one of, the, uh, one of the arrows in our quiver, really across the organization, from fulfillment all the way through to the work we're doing in taking this magical technology and giving it to all developers through AWS, through defining entirely new categories of products and experiences like Echo, Echo Look, and Amazon Go. Yeah, one of the first, one of my first, uh, recollections of Amazon was when Jeff said that there, he was going to have millions of books in the store. <laughs> and I still remember the book, the book company, the traditional book company said, oh, there's no way you could have two million books in the store <laughs> because who's going to go through two million right. books? Well, the reason, for, the reason for that is because they didn't understand machine learning. That's and right. You, and one of our very, very early um, usage of machine learning was in driving discovery and search on our retail site. Mm -hmm. So the famous customers who, also, who bought this also bought is all driven through machine learning. And that's really now uh, uh, used extensively across the site for search, discovery, summarization, you name it. If you're using, shopping on Amazon.com, you're interacting in some way with machine and deep learning systems under the hood. Now, Amazon has multiple pillars of, of, um, uh, of strategies related to AI and machine learning. You guys, you guys use the technology, of course, extensively for all of our shopping experience and managing your warehouse and just 
internal op operations and, and automation. There's another pillar that has to do with robotics and, and the work that you guys do with Echo and Alexa. And then there's another, the new, the new pillar that you guys introduced, I guess, about last year, was taking all of this technology that you guys have invented and putting it up on the cloud so that everybody, every developer, every startup company in the world, every enterprise in the world could benefit from these pre-trained networks of yours um, and uh, create applications based on AI. That's right. So the, the original goal with Amazon Web Services, the very, very first business case, was to be able to take technology that was only within reach of a very, very small number of very, very well-funded organizations and put that uh, within reach of any developer anywhere. And you can see that that's been used now with millions of developers active on the platform every single month. Uh, and we're doing the exact same approach as we took with compute and enterprise data warehousing and applying it to deep learning and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. using computer vision models, speech systems, speech recognition, natural language understanding, and doing a lot of work in driving Apache MXNet uh, forward for all developers. Uh, we've seen and um, been able to work together, our, our two teams, uh, really to optimize MXNet for Volta. Uh, we couldn't be more excited. We've seen amazing performance improvements, both in training and inference. And we're really excited to be a launch partner for when Volta becomes available. And we'll make Volta uh, available as, as the uh, foundation for our next general purpose GPU instance at launch. That's amazing. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the support. All right. Thanks. Now, every, everybody in the audience probably wants to know the same thing I want to know. <laughs> what's, the, what's the funniest question that Alexa gets? The funniest question that Alexa gets. Uh, you know what? It, it's this almost is PG, always. PG, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's all, actually almost always from kids. Uh -huh. um, I bought a new uh, Echo Dot. Uh, you can order it by, just by asking Alexa for it. It arrived. Uh, I took it out of the box, and uh, my son was with me. And, and he said, Hey, Dad, can I hold her? Uh, not can I hold it, but can I hold her? And the affinity that customers have mm -hmm. for Alexa uh, mm -hmm. is really incredible and growing every day. We have a, a remarkable ecosystem, both of devices uh, from Amazon, uh, third parties integrating Alexa into their own uh, cars and refrigerators, mm -hmm. and also 10,000, more than 10,000 Alexa skills available on the platform today. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a bustling ecosystem, which I encourage everyone to experiment with. And so one, one more question that, I, that, that I'm, I'm dying to know about. You, you know, Amazon today has the world's largest scale of GPU cloud. And, and uh, I remember Andy telling me that, that when you guys rolled out the GPU into the cloud, it was the fastest yeah. growing instance that Amazon ever had. And, and uh, I, guess, I guess my question is, is how did you guys, what did you guys see, what, how did you guys know that people wanted GPU in the cloud, and, and why did you guys do it in the first place? Yeah, I mean, it, it really came from customer feedback. About 90% of our roadmap at AWS is driven mm -hmm. directly from what customers ask us for. And they were really asking for NVIDIA chips available with utility pricing and availability. And so we made that available. We've been working together for, for years. Uh, our most recent instance, the P2, uh, is just growing like wildfire. Uh, it's being used extensively for deep learning in virtually every vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, we see uh, medical imaging, uh, uh, in, in, even in regulated workloads. One of your examples earlier, the, the FDA uh, approved regulated workload of deep learning uh, for medical imaging, all the way through to the best performing autonomous driving simulation, mm -hmm. uh, which is from a startup called Too Simple. Uh, they do everything from real time uh, per pixel object segmentation mm -hmm. uh, to centimeter accurate positioning of the car in three dimensional space all up and running on P2 using MXNet mm -hmm. on AWS today. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Thanks. Jeff. Thanks for Thanks, all the Jensen. support. Cheers. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Amazing work at Amazon, revolutionizing computing as we know it, creating the future with cloud computing.